Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be having a quick look at how you can work with CSV files in Grasshopper. If you're relatively new to using Grasshopper and computational design, uh, a CSV file is simply a file that contains comma separated values, hence the name. So Excel and programs similar to that obviously deal a lot in this sort of information. So here I found a CSV online called trees. I don't know how accurate this data is, but hey, it's there, so let's use it. I've got a fresh grasshopper as well as a new Rhino document. And the first thing we want to do is come to parameters and under primitive, we've got our file path component. If we right click on the icon, we can simply select one existing file and find the CSV that we want to reference. Now to read it, simply input and we have our read file which reads the contents of a file. Take a file path into the file input of our read file and if we put down a panel we can see that for each line of our, for each row of our CSV we've got all the data. Now obviously we don't need our title rows, whatever index that is. So we'll come to sets, grab, split. And I'm going to split it at index one. So we can see that we have our title split and just the data that we want to work with. But immediately we see a problem. Our data is not separated how we want to work with it in Grasshopper. So we need to tell it that we want to split it at the commas. So under our text, we have text split. We'll grab our list of text and we'll simply tell it we want to split at the commas. And there we have our data structure that we'll be working with. We'll just clean up a little bit. So, we know that index zero is just the index, or the integer of each tree, so the count of each tree. So again, we don't want that, so I'll just select and copy our split list. And again, we'll just remove the first item. So, now that we have some information coming from a CSV, how can we work with it? So, let's get rid of this panel and we know that list item. We have in index zero, we have the girth and we have the height and it looks like it's in imperial instead of metric. So I'm gonna grab our B list. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna insert a parameter with the button and that should give us the index zero will be all, all our girths and plus one is all our heights. But of course, we're working in millimeters, so we need to multiply. Grab a multiplication component, we'll grab all our girths, and we'll multiply by 25.4. And that should give us the girths in millimeters. Click and drag and hold down Alt to copy again. We'll grab our plus one and we'll change that to 304.8 to convert that into millimeters as well. So we've imported our data and now we wanna do something with it to communicate for whatever reason. So we're gonna construct a point. And so for each piece of data, we want to construct a tree. Let's just call it a tree. So we'll grab our list length component from underneath sets and list. We'll grab how long our list is before we split it. So we have a list length of 31. Then we're gonna use that to create a series. And we want a count of 31. For now, I'll just put in a random number for our size and that should generate our points along x. So just zoom to and then we have 31 points along 
x. Now you can probably guess where this is going. We're going to use this data to demonstrate what we've got in the CSV. So we want to create a circle and each circle will come off our point. So now we have a series of points. Might just don't need to see them now. And then we need the radius for each. So we have the radius here, but it's the girth. So we'll grab a pi component. And we're simply going to multiply pi by two. And then we need to divide our girth to give us the radius. Then we put that in and we immediately get a little error with our data flow. Obviously we're creating 31 circles per point. So we simply graphed our points and we can see here that now we have each size is per, per tree. So instead of using a random number here, I want to get the radiuses. So we will, what do we want? We want sort list. So we'll grab sort list. We'll get our list of radiuses. We'll flatten. And then we'll grab another list item component. We'll grab negative one for the last item in the list. And we will times that because it's the radius, we'll times that by 2.2. So now if we use that as our start, the smaller ones will of course, but the bigger ones, no matter what, will always have a bit of space in between them. Now, the reason why I like to do it that way is that if this data ever changes, it flows through. If we have a static one here and then whatever happens, you generate some data or something. I'm constantly generating data with the robot systems I work with that I then import to communicate or display in Grasshopper or generate something else. But I, I don't know what that's gonna be, so I try and make it as parametric as possible. So now that we have that, I think it's pretty obvious that we wanna use the other data that we've got. So I'll grab an extrude component our base curve will be our circles, and then our distances will be our heights. So bring that across. Ah, I forgot the direction. Double click the canvas and hit Z, which will give us a unit in the Z vector. Now that's something. Okay, that's cool. So now we have our two primary pieces of data demonstrated, but it's not super clear graphically. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just quickly fix up that. And we're gonna put on a custom, custom preview. Our geometry will be our extruded circles. Let's hide our other geometry really quickly. And let's have a gradient. So, Double click the gradient and it gives us our editor. Select our one, actually that looks nice. We'll take that one on the right side and we might move that one down there. Grab that. We might just make that light blue. Okay, so we have a just a subtle gradient from blue to red or pink. And now we need to tell it what we're using. So we'll take the heights and again, we'll sort our list. We'll grab our, all our heights. We'll flatten our data. We'll grab a list item. So our list, we'll have our smallest, 1902. Yep, and our largest there. So we'll go largest in L1, smallest in L2, and then we need to give it the parameters that we're going over, so that will be our heights. So that becomes our input of our materials. 
So we get our data structure flowing throughout the grasshopper. All the data is coming from our file part. So why don't we jump into Excel? We'll grab our tree CSV. Let's add a 32. We'll give it a girth of 25, a height of, let's make it short. Let's make it, what's, 40 looks like it'll stand out and we don't need that because we don't use the volume. If we save that, you'll see that there's the error in Grasshopper while we have it open. So we save it and close. Hit F5 to recompute. And there's our new piece of data already entered and already colored. So by maintaining our data structure and reading our data from CSV, we have successfully done a pretty, pretty attractive little fast workflow to show an orientate color, to display data, I should say. Guys, this was a really quick introduction in uh, importing and using CSV data in Grasshopper. I hope you found it helpful. Um, I'm gonna save this uh, script and make it available on my Patreon, where most of my scripts are available. So if you wanna just download it, feel free to sign up. Otherwise, uh, just like and subscribe if you'd like some uh, more tutorials in uh, the computational and parametric workspace.